Hello there and happy holidays. Today I want to talk about this topic of sensory overload and how narcissists or abusive people, but mostly narcissists, use it in a living situation with you. When you are not giving the narcissist what they want, when you are at peace, they might try to trigger you in different ways and they might use each and every single sense that you have, that we all have against you. That might be touch, it might be your visual sense, it might be smell, it might be your hearing, everything. Um, this could be used as a trigger to start a fight or if you've already kind of retreated into your own peaceful corner trying to get you out of there to react or just to steal your peace and uh, get you off board get you off of your game of being healthy <laughs> which honestly should be everyone's game but i'm not sure everyone is here for winning so um that's another topic let's say you've just had a fight and uh, you're living situation is that there is one or more narcissist in there if there's more then all the more fun for them they can start fighting and uh, yelling and uh, talking about you as if it's behind your back loudly so you can hear it many narcissists use um cleaning as a tool of uh either releasing anxiety or triggering the target of their abuse or both uh i've noticed that they have a weird relationship with cleanliness they're either really messy hoarders that really cannot throw anything out of home or they're really pedantic and crazy about cleaning and their house is uh, supposed to be some kind of a museum that is not lived in and uh, there's no excuses or legitimate reasons for leaving a plate for more than three seconds on the kitchen counter, for example. So, uh, let's say you are in that situation and they just start yelling, they start uh, kicking things, they might start uh, using lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of bleach in their cleaning bucket. I have noticed that they have weird relationship with bleach, more than one of them more than two of them i've heard stories as well so i don't know what that's about but uh for sure my narcissist knows that i can't stand that smell it makes it difficult for me to breathe through so um that's a legitimate weapon for them and uh so here you are being attacked at your hearing being attacked at your uh sense of safety in your own home your smell um they can use nudity to shock you as well uh it's not very uncommon to just see people walking naked inside home especially if they're not your you know romantic partner family members can do that as well so there you go your visual senses are being attacked as well and all of these things can come in um one beautiful bucket of abuse uh, at the same time and then you got sensory overload uh every single thing that you start hearing is processed in your mind and because you don't feel safe you um you get in a really dangerous mental space you either get to dissociate or you really don't feel safe and you just want to get out of there or you know fight flight or freeze uh hopefully you're able to just get out of there and find some peace outside and, uh, you know, calm your mind, listen to some calm music, breathe in, breathe out slowly and uh, try to survive that moment. But this is something that they use and it's more than, uh, I feel it's more than one or two persons with narcissistic personality disorder that use this. They love the drama and it's not just something that they're addicted to and they make us addicted to it while we stay long enough with them or around them, whether we choose to or not to. 
um it is something that you can see that they enjoy especially if they see that they get your peace out of you and uh, the more you withstand that kind of attack the harder it becomes it's like it's uh, going on levels of uh, gaming you start at level 13 and uh, the more peaceful you are they 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 try to get you at level 57 you know and uh, they have no boundaries it has no end like i've seen people you know go to the toilet with an open door and try to call me while i'm having lunch uh crazy things like that i'm sorry if this is triggering but this is the extent of the crazy making that they're willing to engage in just to get you off of peace just to get you off of your creative thinking off of your any sorts of your thought basically they just want your mental stage and they don't want you to be focused concentrated peaceful uh, praying to god or you know being connected to yourself this is why enmeshment is so important to them and i think i'm gonna make a whole new video about enmeshment basically a first new video about enmeshment uh, because it's so so important they use it as a tool they use it as a weapon against us and it's a hook that actually gets us in a place that is possible for them to use sensory overload against us as well because this is so unhealthy and it doesn't mean that you have asperger's and it doesn't mean that you're autistic it just is a reaction to a really really unhealthy situation and if we are already talking about the connection between sensory overload and autism and Asperger's, I think it's very important for each and every one of us who've been through this kind of abuse to go and watch the Harlow experiment from the 50s with the monkeys and the um, cloth mother, or basically the comforting mother and the wire mother. And there is a third monkey... Um, subject in there who basically doesn't get any sort of a mother and uh, they exhibit autistic behaviors i think there's something to it and i think it's worthy to dig into that as well but uh, this is what i've been wanting to talk about today and uh, if you get in that situation, please use anything that you can just to distract yourself. If you have to stay in there, headphones, music, peaceful music. Uh, sometimes if you're angry, you know, you can listen to metal if you're crazy like me. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, sports, try to engage your body to release that anxiety. Because even if you don't feel like you're anxious, it, it, it gathers in your body. All these signals that we receive and our subconscious mind receives each day, especially if we're around these people for a prolonged period of time, can be very, very toxic to us and create actual physical illness in us. So it's very important to move our body and uh, try to keep positive. Get out of the house if you live with them as much as possible. Sometimes it's hard, but... Uh, just breathe some fresh air and try not to engage with them. I know that's really, really difficult. And Grey Rock, for me personally, hasn't worked because uh, my case is a very crazy kind of case. It's a different level of narcissism. But uh, in some cases, it might work. Maybe try to avoid conflict as much as possible because you lose your peace in that sense when you engage with them and of course i'm not saying be their doormat that's not what i'm saying but if you can choose not to re react um just respond in a mature way that leaves you still with your peace and with your train of thought it doesn't steal it from you then if that's possible awesome I hope you're having a safe day, a beautiful week, and I want to wish you a narc-free 2020 New Year. Happy New Year, happy holidays, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.